Uh, yeah, uh, thanks again uh, for the possibility here uh, to, to join your meetup group. Um, I want to talk uh, a little bit about um, learnings and like, uh, yes, so, some of the stories that we have seen working with customers uh, and working with other organizations that are using Prometheus, uh, how to scale it in their organizations. Um, I personally work as a um, DevOps activist or technology strategist at a company called Dynatrace. We have our um, engineering headquarters in Linz in Austria. That's also where I'm located. Uh, but I am heavily involved in an open source project called Captain. And uh, in this talk, I won't like, uh, I think this is the only time I will mention Dynatrace. <laughs> so the rest of the talk, I will be either mentioning Prometheus or the Captain open source project, we'll, which I'm using at the end of the talk or like uh, at the, the start, starting from the middle of the talk to the end of the talk to show you one option or one possibility to overcome this, these challenges that I will uh, sketch in the beginning, but I will also give uh, options, uh, way you, how to build it uh, yourselves. Uh, so if you uh, think Captain would be interesting for you, I will also share the slides afterwards. So you have all the links here and you can, you can give it a try. Um, so as said for like what I want to do today is to really to discuss something, to propose some solutions uh, to you. But if you have something that you want to share, uh, if you have uh, some like other tools uh, that you, you, you want to share and that I should include uh, in, the, in the tool set that I will be discussing, I would be really happy if you share it with me, uh, either in the chat or on, on, on all those different options that you can, you can find me. Um, so yeah, don't be shy. Um, I, I would really appreciate it that I will also be learning something new today. And I'm pretty sure uh, in, in the second talk, I will learn a lot of you. <laughs> but uh, in the first talk, it would be also cool uh, that I, I get some, some suggestions from you. Um, so let us uh, get started. And um, when, when we talked to organizations that are using Prometheus, uh, we, we asked them, what, what do you want? Why are you using Prometheus? What is like uh, the main benefit? And of course, it's the whole observability part. But it's also that they are saying, I want to have like automated dashboards. I want to, for each application that I'm onboarding, I need a couple of predefined or a couple of standard dashboards. I need my alerts in my alert manager setup based on some rules that we define inside of our company or we define for some of our products, some of our services. Uh, and of course, I want to have like everything automated. I want to have automated monitoring of all those applications. Um, so this is what folks usually want, but of course, this is not where they, they get in the very beginning. So how can we get there? And for today, I've uh, prepared a little bit of the, the agenda. So I want to start with basic Kubernetes building blocks, very simplified, but they will guide us through those challenges. Uh, and uh, I've prepared three challenges and options how to overcome them. Uh, and then I will talk about a little bit about this open source project that I'm involved in. Uh, called Captain and uh, how to overcome these challenges also with Captain. Um, I've also written a blog on this. So if you want to, um, to, uh, to read this blog, I put in here the link. Uh, it's, it's a so-called friends link on Medium. So you're not wasting your free stories a month. Uh, I'm not even sure about this whole um, thing on Medium, uh, but some of those stories, they are hidden behind the paywall. But if you go with this friends link, it's, it's, uh, it will put it be. Uh, in front of the table, so uh, it, it will be uh, for free. Um, so what do we have uh, usually in Kubernetes? We have our application clusters. So we have uh, one or more clusters. So we have our pods uh, running in our clusters. These are exposing uh, metrics on this endpoint and Prometheus is basically scraping all these metrics, uh, fetching all these metrics. Uh, storing it and then providing it uh, to users directly via Prometheus or most often via um, Grafana dashboards. So you can take a look uh, and see what's really going on. And uh, you have scaling inside all these applications. And of course, you also might have scaling on the Prometheus clusters. Um, both Prometheus and Grafana, they need configuration. Obviously, it's not that everything is uh, predefined out of the box. So you have to configure this. And this configuration will be kind of how to scale configuration for these systems 
will be the core of this presentation. It's not so much that how to scale Prometheus clusters. There are other projects out there. Um, I know uh, of the project Atenas or Victoria Metrics, and maybe there are even more. Um, so those are some projects that you might be interested in if you're looking for like from a technical perspective to scale. Um, so I won't be touching these. These are, I think, great projects out there. They have also um, been presented at KubeCon and uh, at various other um, options, and you can find them online. So it's Tainus Victoria Metrics uh, and maybe others, but I won't touch this, this part. Uh, I will be more touching the part of really um, having scaling the, the whole configuration and to enable more teams to use Prometheus and to use the whole Prometheus ecosystem with uh, the alert manager in Grafana and other tools that you might have. Um, so first of all, one problem that we have seen uh, is that all those configurations that you need to write for Prometheus and alert manager in Grafana, uh, they, you write them, you apply them, uh, but still you have to make sure that you have uh, you version them and to make sure that the version that it's like in your Git repository is actually the version that it's applied in Prometheus. Sometimes you have like uh, it's uh, there is some incident and you're configuring or you're rewriting configurations, you're going directly to your uh, Kubernetes cluster and you're editing YAML files directly on the cluster. This of course uh, it's not version anymore so it's not synced with your Git repository. So these are some challenges that we've seen and these are some like problems that we've seen. So the first part is really make sure that all of the configurations that you are writing and that you're using to put everything first in the Git repository and then have some kind of operator uh, that is synchronizing the Git repository with the actual Prometheus instances and installation. So in this case, you really can follow a GitOps approach where you define the desired state and the desired state is defined in the Git repository and to operate it takes care of synchronizing this to the Prometheus installations into everything else that is depending on this. So no manual edits of production or any other stage anymore and you can really have one centralized repository. That might sound a little bit obvious but uh, we have seen this that it's uh, that it, it is a problem uh, or it, it is a challenge, let's say. So um, make sure to have this, to put this into a Git repository and have some, some operator uh, that is synchronizing this. Um, another challenge uh, that we've seen is writing all those configurations. So it might need some uh, folks that are really into uh, YAML files, writing YAML files, but also uh, that really know how to, to write the, uh, the scrape charts or recording rules or whatever is needed for them in their organization. Um, they, they need to have deep knowledge of all these configurations. So writing all these configurations, possibly also in different languages uh, or like, yeah, in YAML or JSON or JSONet or whatever you're using, um, take some time. And uh, be aware it's not only one configuration that you have to write, but it's really, it's a couple of configurations and we've seen large systems uh, where they are generating parts of these configurations. Uh, and that brings me already to the next point, the use of code gener generators. So there are a lot of code generators out there and I think most of them are great. Uh, I think it's good to use them uh, because they really take away this burden of having um, like making mistakes in all these configurations and finding uh, like uh, in YAML that you have, that the intendation is not correct and these kind of things. So code generators really provide the power that you just feed them with the input and they are generating the configuration file that you need. I've listed a couple of them at the end of the presentation. So, but again, if you have more, uh, I'm happy to include them and, uh, and uh, to, to, to find, to make like a collection of all this file, uh, of all this code generated generators that might, uh, that might be useful. Um, still, these code generators that I found and we, we, that I've discussed uh, also with, uh, with parts of the community, they most often solve one challenge or maybe they are one code generator for Grafana dashboards, but they are not the same, it's not the same code generators for Prometheus configuration. 
uh, or the other way around. So the problem is that you feed them with different input data. And if you're not cautious, then this input data might vary a little bit. And then you get like different configuration files because of slightly different inputs into your, uh, into your files. So what you really need is some way to base everything on one concept to have like one kind of input file and feed all these code generators with the same kind of input. And what we have seen is um, that concepts from the site reliability engineering community are really a good fit for these kind of things. So it's service level indicators, service level objectives, error budget, service level agreements, these kind of things uh, are really um, valuable inputs for those code generators. And with this, you can then generate all the rest, put it in the Git repository, use the operator to, to synchronize everything to your Prometheus instances and Grafana dashboards. So this is like one potential solution for, or well, we're already a couple of potential solutions to overcome these challenges. And this really gives you the possibility to define what you want and not so much define how it is done. So you're raising the abstraction level, basically, uh, that you define everything in, based on concepts uh, that you can, it, it's more easy to, to discuss based on SLOs than to discuss based on PromQL uh, that you need to write. Uh, because for PromQL, you need a, a specialist. And for SRE concepts, they are more easy to understand. And based on those, you can then generate the PromQL and you can validate if it's correct. And then you, uh, then you put it in the Git repository. Um, so with this, I want to uh, introduce this open source uh, tooling called Captain. And uh, here I wrote is, uh, is a way how to automate the configuration of Prometheus Grafana. But actually, when we started the project, we did not even think about that this will be some kind of a side product. But it was Captain is actually a control plane for continuous delivery with automated quality gates baked in that are using Prometheus data. And for, for using all this Prometheus data, we can also use it to configure Prometheus in the first way that we then in the second step can use all the data uh, and, and already know how to query the data because we have also configured pre Prometheus in a way that we can query the data afterwards. So with this, it was kind of a side, a side product. Uh, and with Captain, you can also automate parts of your operations. I think I've written it also in, the, in, the, in another slide, what, what Captain is. But let me show you in this picture that I've discussed before where Captain comes into place. So it's basically Captain takes as an input um, SLO files, service level objectives that describe the service, the goals of the service uh, in terms of quality criteria, like a response time or an error rate or um, throughput or memory consumption, these kind of things. So this will be the input file for Captain. And Captain then itself has its own internal um, components that will generate all the configuration for the attached monitoring tool. So in the beginning, I said, uh, I won't mention the company I'm working for, but it's, the monitoring tools can be either, for example, Prometheus, so we are generating Prometheus configuration, or we can also generate configuration for Dynatrace or for other monitoring tools. Um, and Captain also has its internal Git repository, so you also get this synchronization or this version management of all those configuration files, and then the application of these configuration files to the different components uh, in your Prometheus ecosystem. So uh, I've talked a little bit now. Uh, let me just show you a, like a five-minute demo. What I mean with uh, configuring these kind of things. Um, what I do have is. My Grafana. So what I do have is I set up a Grafana instance. It's uh, fairly new, so there shouldn't be anything. Uh, there are no dashboards. Uh, there are no data sources. So it's a, it's it's kind of a fairly new uh, Grafana installation. Uh, same is true for for Prometheus, and I have my Captain installation uh, already up and running on this uh, Kubernetes cluster. So it's um, like if I take a look at all the pods that are running already in my captain installation, I will see a couple of services that and like 
all these services, they make up the whole captain control plane. I will talk about this in a minute. But what we'll see, I have one service for Grafana and I have, one, I have a couple of services for Prometheus and they will be responsible for taking the input and then uh, doing something with all this input and configuring the uh, Prometheus and, and Grafana. So uh, we've seen everything is up and running and let me now do the configuration of Prometheus. So Captain is event-based. And in this sense, uh, with the CLI, I'm sending one event to my Captain control plane. Uh, the event will hold information about that I want to configure um, my monitoring tool Prometheus for one specific project, basically the application, and for one specific uh, microservice. It's my shopping cart called Carts. And I will just execute this command. It will take um, it will the, the captain cluster will receive a cloud event and will process this cloud event um, like both services will process the cloud event. First Prometheus and second Grafana uh, will process this cloud event. It can be more services that can subscribe to this kind of events, but in my use case it's only these two services that are interested in all this configuration of Prometheus uh, information. And what I like what, what was happening in the background is that first Prometheus was configured, like all the scrape jobs for my project, um, sock shop and my service um, cards have been created, alerting rules have been created for um, based on my SLO file. I have one SLO file edit, here it says no SLO file found for stage production. Uh, I only have one SLO file for my stage. Uh, I think it's called pre-production, but we'll see it in a minute. Um, so these files, they have been uh, taken into consideration for then creating all these rules, the alerting rules, the scrape jobs, and also my Grafana dashboard. So if I go back to my Grafana, I should now see at least the data source. We have to reload. Yeah, so I see now my, my data source. It's on the same cluster, so it was configured to be on the same cluster as, um, as, my, as, uh, as the service where it's running. And uh, I should be also able to see some dashboards, probably. Here we go. We have a captain dashboard, and we can already see some data coming in. So, uh, and uh, I can see I have data coming in into my production environment, staging, and dev environment. So it's very simplified, but it will it, it, it should give you the idea that you can for each new application that you onboard now, uh, you can automatically generate all these dashboards and you can uh, summarize all these application all the services of the applications into these dashboards to have automatically a couple of like metrics that you might be interested like response time, throughput, and error rate as like the, the basic metrics that you might be interested in. So let me show you how we envisioned this and, how, and uh, how, we, how we've done this. So as said, Captain is an event-based control plane for continuous delivery and automated operations. Uh, it's a very long sentence and it has a couple of buzzwords, we know, but still we like the sentence because it kind of really says what it is. It's a control plane, so it will connect different tools and it will kind of orchestrate different tools for continuous delivery and automated operations. So Captain itself can do continuous delivery, but we can also control others like Argo CD, uh, Argo Rollout or Jenkins or other tools that or uh, Azure DevOps. So other tools that you, might, that you might already be using, you can put Captain on top of it so that Captain can control like the deployment of the of the service, but Captain again trigger afterwards the tests. So you don't have to trigger the tests manually after you do the deployment. After the tests, Captain can trigger the evaluation. So you then don't have to do any evaluation manually. After the uh, evaluation, Captain can decide if it's a thumbs up or thumbs down and promote it to the next stage. So these kind of things uh, Captain can control uh, as a control plane. And attached to the control plane are all the services that you have seen uh, in my console before. So for example, I have services for uh, configuring Prometheus and Grafana, but I have also other services like connecting it to a Slack bot so that you can control Captain with the Slack bot or you get all the notifications of all the 
failed or past evaluations, or you get notifications if new services get onboarded so that you can take a look at the dashboards in Grafana every time there is a new uh, application onboarded uh, to, to Prometheus in Grafana. So these kind of things you can add to Captain. And Captain itself provides a couple of those out of the box, but it has a growing ecosystem where other organizations are contributing their services to Captain so that those cloud events that are floating through Captain can be um, fetched by the services and integrated, and then they will be controlled to, or they will be used to control some external uh, system. So Captain lives in your Kubernetes cluster and it will be uh, acting upon of uh, like uh, when, whenever Captain is receiving events, it will act. So it's not an operator. Uh, that is also like it's, it's, a, it's a prominent way to do things in Kubernetes to do it as an operator. Captain itself is not an operator, but Captain is reacting on cloud events. So it can easily interact with other tools because it, it, they can just send cloud events to Captain uh, also from outside. So now we have Captain, let's say, in our cluster. How is the whole SLI and SO thing working with Captain? First of all, we have to understand what. SLIs and SLOs are, uh, and that's very easy because the definition of it is, uh, is very straightforward. First, service level indicators are SLIs, and we can basically think of it as a metric. So something like an error rate of login requests for the last five minutes, that this metric would be the SLI. The SLO is some goal, some objective, obje objective sorry, that we define upon the SLI. So we are using the SLI, let's say the error rate of login requests, and we are defining an objective upon it. And we say it must be less than 2% to the previous run, uh, or no, sorry, uh, must be less than 2%. So we, we don't have to, to compare it to anything within the last five minutes. So this would be something we can evaluate. And based on this, we can either even define SLOs, but for Captain itself, we are only using SLIs and SLOs since these are more the technical parts and the service level agreements are more the business agreements. Um, there is a nice and very short YouTube video um, I've, I've also linked here. Um, so I think it will explain it like uh, roughly five minutes, uh, the whole concept behind it. So now we have our SLIs and SLOs and in Captain we have already, as you've seen, uh, we have already baked in a couple of SLIs uh, the red metrics. Um, these are the response time, the error rate, and the throughput, uh, or the other way around. But uh, that's basically uh, standard metrics that you might that you might want for your applications. So how does it work based on those files to create the alerts and the dashboards? So first of all, you can either define the indicators by yourself, or you can reuse the indicators that Captain has already built in. So for example, we can, uh, for example, the number of database calls, that's not something that is already built in into Captain, but you can just define it and you would map it, the, the name of this indicator, you would just uh, define it with the PromQL. So this will be evaluated whenever you are asking for the number of, uh, of the database calls. The error rate, the response time is already baked in, but if you want to override it, you can do so in this indicator file. And you can then reuse those indicators in your objective file. And the objective file holds a list of service level indicators and defines one objective or criteria upon the service level indicator. So we are, for example, um, using the error rate and we define the error rate has to be smaller than one, smaller or equal to one. So we are, ex we are uh, accepting a maximum of 1% error rate. Uh, then it's allowed to pass. We also have like warning criteria uh, that say, uh, if, you're if you're not within the pass criteria, then also warning will be evaluated and you get half the score for the whole SLI. And in total, then Captain can generate a score for you and you have like a total score for this service level objective evaluation. And this is the basic part for, uh, for the Captain quality gate. We can use it for the Captain quality gate for your continuous delivery, but we can also use it to, uh, to define your, um, 
your alerts and thresholds uh, in your dashboards in this kind of thing. So it's, we, we can use it for, for multiple things. Uh, and this is where uh, I, I spoke in the beginning that everything is based on some common concepts. These are our SLIs and SLOs. These are the SRE concepts. We are using this, but we are reusing them a lot inside Captain. And these files are stored in, uh, also stored in the Git repository. So when we are executing our command to configure our monitoring tool at Prometheus, um, this will be first sent to the Captain control plane. The control plane will distribute this event to all, all the services that are listening for these kind of events. Uh, as said, it's a cloud event. That's a CNCF project. Um, and we are using the, the, the syntax of a cloud event here also uh, in Captain. So it will be, in my case, it was distributed to our Grafana service and to our Prometheus service. They're now interpreting this cloud event in a way to, to generate some tool specific uh, interpretation or to, to generate the API calls that are needed for those tools and uh, are executed. So the Grafana service was talking to my Grafana installation, my Prometheus service was talking to my Prometheus installation, and they were doing the configuration for both of them based on the same input file that we can see. I think it was not the same uh, as I've put here on the slides, but it was the same input file that both of them are receiving at the same time, and they are doing the, this generation. So we can also use the same files. On the left-hand side, it's again the same file, but you can also use them for evaluating the service quality of, uh, of a microservice. So we can use the Captain CLI or API to start some evaluation. So Captain will reach out to the data provider that is configured in the previous command. So Captain now knows how to reach also how to, to reach Prometheus or others. It will uh, reach out to those data providers, will fetch all those SLIs, will uh, of course execute all those prompt URL to fetch all these metrics, will evaluate them in the time frame uh, that, that is given, uh, either that is given here or uh, as I said before, Captain can be used as a control plane. So if you're using Captain as a control plane uh, to trigger also tests like performance tests or load tests, uh, Captain knows when you trigger the test and when the tests have been finished, so you don't have to um, to define the time frame because Captain already knows. So it will be it will fetch the, the data for the correct time frame, evaluate the data, score all these SLIs. Will uh, give you a score between uh, one and zero for each SLI, and then come up with a total score like ninety percent, eighty percent whatever is the total score of this evaluation, and then give you basically a thumbs down or, uh, thumbs down or thumbs up for, your, uh, for the quality of, of the service. And then you can use this to either promote the service to the next stage, to roll it back, to discard a uh, canary uh, rollout, uh, these kind of things. Or also to check it uh, when there is an alert coming in from the Prometheus Alert Manager. If, when there's alert coming in, you're executing some remediation action. This can be also triggered with Captain you're executing a remediation action. Then after you executed this remediation action, you can again use the captain quality gate to evaluate um, if the service quality is now um, satisfying again. And then you can either execute the next remediation action, execute the next remediation action, or you can close the problem since it has been remediated. So uh, these SLI concepts and SLO concepts and files can be reused a lot of time. So, how can we really use this within Captain? And uh, when do they come into play? Uh, so first of all, in Captain, everything is organized inside projects and services. So first, you basically create the project. Uh, we can say the project is something like a, uh, a Git repository where we store all of our files. And inside Captain, it's also um, each project will get its own namespace with different stages. Uh, so this, will, this can be managed by Captain uh, and will be managed in your Kubernetes cluster. And the project itself is defined by a name and by shipyard file. So with Captain, we use kind of these nautical terms. The shipyard file basically describes your environment, uh, describes uh, which stages you want to have, like a pre-production or staging stage, 
uh, in the production stage, which kind of deployment strategies you want to have, which kind of testing strategies. It does not define the tooling, like which kind of monitoring. You would not define it in the shipyard. You would define it in the captain's uniform that will then connect the tooling to the actual process. So we really have a distinction between like what you want to have here and who is responsible for it that's defined in the captain's uniform. So in this case, captain will go ahead, create the, uh, the Git repository, will create some parts in your Kubernetes cluster. You would onboard the new services with the Helm chart. You will onboard them to captain. Captain will put this Helm chart in its Git repository to version it. And you would also add all these resources like SLI and SLO files. So they will be also added to the Git repository and version. I can also show you this, uh, this in an example later. And in the next step, you start to configure your monitoring, either Prometheus or other monitoring tools uh, that will basically create for the service that is are already onboarded and based on the SLI and SO files that you've already given the captain, they will configure your Prometheus and Grafana instances. And with this, you can start to deploy services with captain to send an event about a new artifact uh, and new artifact is basically a new docker or a new container image doesn't have to be docker but a new container image and captain will start its deployment pipeline and triggering all these different tools for example triggering helm uh, actually first updating the git repository then triggering helm to do the deployment if it's uh, configured as a blue green deployment captain will do a blue green deployment with helm um, triggering the tests that have been um, that have been defined, either performance tests or just some, some some basic tests. The test tool itself again is defined in the captain's uniform. So in this case, I select the JMeter. So JMeter will be triggered once JMeter is finished. It will come back with the evaluation to captain. Captain will start to evaluate it based on the SLI SO files and then decide to promote it or not promoted to the next stage, all the information or maybe just the information about the promotion can be sent via Slack or Teams or whatever you're using. And then if you decide, if Captain decides or you decide to promote it, you can move it to the next stage. You can also skip tests. Um, Captain will try to reach a testing tool. If no testing tool is available, Captain will move on to the next stage. So for example, in this case, I've decided in production, I don't want to execute performance tests or load tests since I have basically my end users uh, testing my website, my web shop uh, all the time by just uh, using it. Uh, so I can just wait for a couple of uh, minutes, hours, whatever, and then do an, uh, another evaluation, uh, score it again, and then keep it or roll it back to the previous version. So uh, what we've seen is that we can really use Captain as um, as a tool to configure first Prometheus and Grafana, and then to use all the configuration later on to fetch all the data for quality gates uh, checking and also to, to define uh, or to decide if some alerts have been already remediated or if they need, need more attention. So how is, uh, is this configuration uh, or integration done in Captain? As said, it's Captain itself is a control plane. So uh, Captain, uh, most of the services, they are connecting to Captain and they are contributed uh, and live in our own Git uh, contribution repository. So we have Prometheus and the Prometheus SLI service. It's, the reason behind it is just that um, the Prometheus service is basically responsible for configuring Prometheus and like talking to a Prometheus instance and configuring this instance the other one, the Prometheus SLI service, is more responsible for fetching all the data from Prometheus. And then we have a Grafana service. All three services, or even more services, they can listen on the same events, same kind of events, uh, and they can, uh, they can interpret the events in a way how, uh, that is up to, up to the implementation of all the services. So we see, for example, um, a notification service that is also fetching all these events that are flowing through Captain and sending out or pushing all these events to, to a notification channel in Slack or, or Teams. Um, so as said, I've written um, 
a little bit about this also in uh, in the blog. Uh, I again put the link here. I put a couple of links here also on those code generators. If you have more, uh, I would be happy to include them. Um, if you have uh, something like built by yourself, built by your company, if it's open source, I would be very curious uh, to take a look at it and uh, probably include it also here. Um, if you think that uh, like Captain might solve some of your uh, challenges, uh, please go ahead and, and give it a try. Our website is captain.sh and all the source lives on github.com slash captain uh, slash captain. That's our main repository. Uh, if you want to give it a try um, and if you want to have like hands-on tutorials, it's tutorials.captain.sh. That's also an easy way to get started. Uh, but yeah, um, just let me know if, if, you are, if you think that might be something that uh, will help you in your journey uh, of onboarding more services to um, or like uh, using Prometheus to monitor and to get observability for more services in your organization, um, that would be great. And yeah, I think that was it. Um, what I wanted to show you, uh, since I'm at the end of my slides, but what I wanted to show you is like how we, how the Git repository for Captain looks like, and then I will take a look uh, if there are already some, some questions. So going back to, um, or going to my Git repository. So Captain holds its own Git repository inside the Kubernetes cluster. But in this case, I've linked it to GitHub so I can show you uh, what, what's really going on. So first of all, I have all the different stages defined as branches in my Git repository. So uh, I can take a look at, for example, at my staging branch and I can see which services are onboarded. So I have two different services, the carts database and then the shopping cart service itself. So it's a very, very small sock shop. It's not even the full sock shop. It's just the shopping cart uh, and no search, no front end, uh, nothing else, but just the shopping cart. Um, by the way, the source code of the shopping cart does not live in this Git repository. It lives wherever you, you have it because Captain itself was never intended to, to version the source code and to build your microservice. But we start when the microservice is already built as a container image and then we start, uh, then Captain can kick in basically. Um, and we have all the services that are, uh, all the, the files that I was talking earlier, uh, we have them here. We have our SLO file. We have the testing instructions here. We have the Helm charts here. And so taking a look at our SLO files, we can see how the service level quality will be evaluated. And this is the file that will be used also to generate the alerts and uh, uh, in parts of the dashboards. So in the moving to another stage, like to production, I think I've not added that yet. For production, I've not added an SLO file, so I won't be creating any alerts for production, which is in the demo, it's, it's okay, but for a production use case, of course, you also want to have this SLO file. Good part is you can easily reuse those SLO files uh, since in the SLO file itself, it doesn't talk about any service it is responsible for because we put it in the right structure in the Git repository. So Captain knows where to look, look for these kind of files. So if there is a file inside the carts folder, then Captain will find it. If there is no file, then Captain will just skip it. So in this case, uh, this is how Captain uh, manages and versions uh, these files. So I think uh, that was um, most of it. Um, and I'm happy to, to answer some questions. Um, there is uh, one question. Um, if I understand it, you need to know the metrics names up front. Is there a way to create recording rules? Uh, actually, yes, the, the, the metric names, like in the service level indicator files, maybe we have one here, edit, or I'm reusing the indicators that are already built in. I'm afraid I'm re reusing the ones that are already built in. Let me just take a look. So we have to. Go back to the slides. Here we go. Yeah, so the indicators, this is something Captain has a built-in uh, mechanism to, uh, to define the, the indicator. Um, sorry, I have to start again. So Captain has a, has a built-in library for a couple of indicators, basically the ones that I mentioned that are based on the red metrics. 
So it will be the error rate, the response time, and uh, the, the throughput. Um, so we have a couple of them. For, uh, for the response time, we have a couple of different percentiles already defined. Uh, the other ones you have to define in this, uh, in this format. Um, other like recording rules, um, I think you cannot really reuse them or directly, uh, I'm not sure yet if the, um, if the latest, the latest version of the uh, Prometheus service is also creating the recording rules for just the scraped jobs and then uh, based on the scraped jobs, um, all those uh, alerts, for example, and, uh, and uh, queries in, in Grafana. Thank you. And I will put the link uh, to the slides uh, in, the, in the chat.